Hello everybody, Dokkan Assets here. Today we are back with a, another animation analysis video and we've got a double header for you today ladies and gentlemen. Of course in this video we're going to be taking a look at Int LR Namek Goku and the video that's either going to go up before or after this I guess I'm not sure. The AGL Full Power Freeze LR. Now of course with worldwide celebration literally happening probably tomorrow the time that these videos go up or the day of something like that the units from last year's worldwide celebration of course being goku and frieza have been sort of used a lot in the marketing for this year's worldwide celebration and as such i figured this was a appropriate time as any to take a look at the sort of predecessor units to the super saiyan goku and cooler that we're going to be getting this year so of course let's go ahead and take a look at the animations as per usual we watch through them one time on the regular speed and then we take a look at them in the two uh slowed speed so i'm really actually pretty excited to review these guys because i've wanted to take a look at them in more in-depth detail in a while uh, or for a while rather excuse me and i figured obviously with worldwide about to come up and these being the worldwide units from last year too i mean it works even if they would have been not themed around this year right but these guys stand up to the test of time really, really well. Obviously, they are only a year old, so of course, a lot of the animations from simply a year ago still look really, really good by today's standards. There are definitely some things that could be added into these, I think, to make them look even more crispy, um, which I'm hoping that the cooler and Goku animations do for sure. But... When these came out, I remember people were losing their absolute minds over these. And I honestly cannot blame them because... Are you seeing what I'm looking at here right now, bro? <laughs> Look at the animations on your screen. Absolutely fantastic stuff so let's go ahead and take a look at the 12 key of course this was before all of the intro animation shenanigans so of course our lrs for both of these guys are just going to have a 12 key super and an active skill so we actually have a lot to unpack right here in just the very beginning of this, right? We have the sort of almost like an intro animation, kind of like a precursor to it, where you have sort of like the setup to the battle on the screen, right? Obviously, we have Goku squaring off against Frieza. And I have to say, with this first shot, because this is just going to be something that's very consistent throughout the entire video, right? Holy moly, does this animation really nail the art style of this era of Dragon Ball and the Namek Saga in its entirety. Goku looks absolutely perfect here. We're not going to talk about Frieza because that's the enemy sprite, okay? Well, push that out of your mind. <laughs> he also looks very funny literally being a midget there, right? But... Goku looks absolutely fantastic. I think the battle damage all over his body looks really good. The damage on the planet as well, right? And the coloration looks really good too. Of course, the sky being these wacky colors makes sense because, of course, by this point, the, pen, the planet, excuse me, is literally dying, right? So, very, very nice shot. We have this very little just kind of slide. Of course, very, very cool use of the lightning effects here to have some very nice lighting effects on Goku. I always really like this part because I feel like this definitely could have just been Goku standing there menacingly, right? And they didn't have to add in this section of the animation. But by golly, they did. And I'm so glad that they did because not only does it make it a lot more interesting to a shot where... In theory, I guess there's not really a lot going on, right? They're sort of just standing there looking at each other. Um, it's just cool to see them add in things like that, right? So, of course, we have the transition to the card art, which I have to say, this is probably one of the quickest transitions to the card art in any Dokkan Super Attack. It would be interesting if somebody could try and find that. What's the quickest that a Dokkan card art pops up in one of their attacks. Um, this might be a contender for sure, because this is literally basically before the entire animation happens. Okay, so before we even go in um, any crazy amount of depth here, 
This is pretty cool, I have to say, because this is something that I feel like you don't really think about or notice until you sort of dissect this sort of thing, right? So we have Goku standing here on the rocks, sky in the background, all that. But what's really cool about this is this sort of takes the perspective from this initial image and you can actually see that Goku is a little bit up on a rock, right? He's not on the same plane as Frieza is. And after the card art is shown, right, when we get to the shot um, where we have him standing there with a cut him from white. He is actually standing on the same rock plateau. So that is a really nice attention to detail because I feel like that's something that could have easily been forgotten about and he could have simply just been on the ground. So this is a true perspective shift where Goku is standing in the same spot. Very nice attention to detail there. So, before Goku even launches off, he has a little bit of movement here squatting down, which is cool because, of course, you know, it sort of implies that he's about to burst forward. As well, the way that they cover up having to make him change positions and this absolute very big change in assets, right? Because you can see it's a lot darker colors here, and then when it lights up, it's a lot lighter looking, right? They use the flash of white, which is definitely a great way to, you know, transition between rather than having just a awkward jittery animation or doing the fade of assets that you know I am not a fan of. But yeah, so we transition into this Goku flying forward with a little bit of movement on the individual assets themselves um, and flying forward until... <laughs> <laughs> Look at that quality jump right there, ladies and gentlemen. That's pretty crazy. Um, so keep in mind, these animations are the ones that were directly ripped from Twitter. So unfortunately, they're not like the best quality version of the animation. However, the JP Twitter does have a little bit of a bigger area, right? Where the global Twitter cuts off the sides of the animations. I don't know why they do that, but um, with this, right? This asset looks really good and high quality if the video wasn't so bad, but... I think it is also a testament to this asset was meant to be seen from far away because of course when we transition into quite literally this, right, you can see that this looks fine, right? It's hard to even tell that this is a 480 image right here, right? Of course, if you looked at it closely, you could probably tell, but this is also because of course the asset was smaller originally, you know, and then increased in size. Now, there is a quick change, right, from one shot to another here, right? with Goku sort of turning his head, and I guess maybe more so the camera sort of turning around him. In practice, you would think that this doesn't look too great, especially with this very big jump in, you know, change to one position to another. These assets look great, by the way. Um, and then, of course, you have this nice headshot of Goku. I don't think I've ever seen anybody screenshot this shot before. And then we, of course, wrap around to Goku, then punching Frieza. First of all, a very cool camera angle right there, right? Absolutely sick. Um, and the way that they mask the punch is with that little flash of light. I want to look real quick, actually. In full-time speed, can you tell that those different positions are there? Let's see. No, it is really hard to tell um, when he is actually moving through. Man, that shot is so nice. Why has no one talked about that before? <laughs> yeah, when it's actually moving through, it is really hard to tell. If you really focus on it, you can maybe tell a little bit, like if you really hold your attention to, you know, the individual sections of it, right? Then maybe you can pick up on that. But honestly, I think it looks really, really great in the full range of motion. So again, like I said, we have the sort of flash of white to mask the punch, which is really cool. Again, a very nice way to do a asset transition without having it be awkward. And of course, it helps with the impact of the punch here. Um, a big Japanese splash text across the front. And I didn't even notice this, honestly, but these very cool impact frames in the background, it kind of reminds me of when Gohan turned Super Saiyan 2 with like that red line in the background. But yeah, of course, this emphasizing the punch um, that Goku is giving to Frieza. Interesting as well um, that the way that they do this, right, is that as soon as it cuts to white, it's this black background, and then it immediately cuts back to the Namek background. Again, in full motion, it's not really like gonna catch you off guard it's just because we're looking at it with the frame by frame right so the enemy flies away um which unfortunately this is probably one of the worst parts of the essay just because you're looking at the sprite <laughs> but the ground itself looks really good right i think that the area again uh is very well done we have a cut to goku flying forward i always thought that this shot looked really really nice um again i'm kind of surprised that no one talks about this shot Maybe it's just because it's so quick, but like, man, this shot of Goku looks so good. It would, again, look a little bit better if it was in higher quality for sure. Um, but yeah, 
The key effects as well on Goku as he's flying forward are literally perfect. I know it's basically just them playing PNGs in an order to make them look like they're rotating, but it looks exactly how it does in the anime, which is really cool. We also have a nice close-up shot where Goku goes right past the camera, so we kind of get his leg, and then his foot follows past the camera. Oh, that is so cool. I know that's something that seems kind of silly to sort of gush over like that, but that is just a, such a cool like perspective type of thing, right, that I feel like we don't see as often in animations, right? It's nice to sort of get that perspective um, more than just like, oh, he would just be flying towards the camera, right? It's a lot more unique. As well, of course, they follow it up with the key trail behind Goku, and then we have a cut to him flying forward and knocking into Frieza with his trail, right? This section looks really good, too. Obviously, it flies by very quickly. Oh, my gosh. Okay. <laughs> We are, we are on to uh, one of my favorite sections of these animations here. I know we're only six seconds into this animation. I should have said in the beginning of the video, oh, this is going to be a long one. So buckle your seatbelts for sure. But, oh my gosh, the key effects here are absolutely insane, dude. They go crazy. So, obviously, we have Goku, right, coming from the... Um, like being enveloped in the key, right? And then immediately it is dispersing off of his body. I really like the 12 key super, by the way. I have to say it's my favorite animation of the bunch of these for sure. So we have the key sort of dissipate off of Goku's body. First of all, he looks amazing in this shot. Very well done, exactly like the Namek Saga. And his hair is sort of smushed down because, of course, the way that he's moving, the wind is moving it, right? But look at the way that they do the key effects before we even talk about Goku, right? Just the way that the key sort of disintegrates off of Goku, right? And then fades into nothingness. Oh my gosh! When I saw that for the first time, I like lost my mind. Because that is just so sick looking. Look at this one more time. Look at how it just dissipates off of his body, right? And it literally just looks like it fades into light. Especially in the full time speed, right? Of course, it looks a little bit janky in the slow, but... Look at that. It literally just looks like it, how it would in the anime, right? Where it basically just disappears. So good. And I love that attention to detail too. Because I feel like lesser animations would just take that scene and go, Oh, okay, we're just going to turn off the key now, right? Very, very cool. I love that attention to detail. Absolutely. So we have Goku spinning here, which this shot of him actually getting ready to, and then of course getting into sort of like a ball position uh, in a minute here, right? Where... This is a really cool, again, perspective for this animation. I think this animation has a lot of good shots of some really unique, um, you know, perspectives. Because what this is, is obviously the previous shot was Goku flying right above the ground, right? And so now you're on the ground looking up at Goku. That is so cool, right? And so, of course, as he now passes by the camera, you're sort of going behind him and you can see that obviously the camera wraps around so that now you're almost like standing on the ground quote unquote and you're looking at the bottom of his boots there such a cool perspective here again this is going to be a long one we're only seven seconds in and there's already so many great things about this animation right so of course then we have goku flip into a ball which obviously the flip looks really really nice we have him smash into the rocks here um, which is really really cool interesting that some of the rocks are already falling i don't know if that was from a previous attack um or if that's just like a, a mishap on the designer's part but of course um we have goku sort of flip into frame here right which, by the way, again, even though the cuts can sometimes be a little bit jarring in animations, um, I think that this one is done alright. You have the cut from Goku about to land, right, to his feet sort of coming to the rocks um, in the cut between perspectives here. So I think that's another good way to do that. It's especially a lot better than them simply just fading between the assets. Y'all know how much of a fan I am of that. Not at all. But we have a very cool shot here of when Goku obviously blasts off of from the rocks. We have a very nice puff of smoke here. And of course the rock effects blast um, from the rock mountain face. We have Goku fly forward with some nice motion lines here to sort of represent that movement. And then of course we have Goku fly forward. Which this perspective is pretty insane, right? 
the way that they move the land in accordance to where Goku is, right? You have him move forward a little bit in the distance. Funny enough, you can see that he actually changes positions between these two frames right there, but obviously that's not very noticeable because, of course, it's a lot farther away, um, and they're sort of averting your attention somewhere else, right? So then obviously you're not really paying attention to that. But then this really cool perspective change, right, where the land is sort of moving here is super sick. I can't really recall a lot of animations where they do this. Maybe it's just not as noticeable because they do a good job of integrating it. But I feel like that's something that a lot of other animations could definitely do because I think that would be really cool to see implemented more. Now, obviously, as we have the flat ground, we have Goku come in for the kick here, um, which is a super cool animation. I think definitely a pretty iconic part about this for sure. We have a cut to the enemy sprite. And of course, Goku comes in with the kick real quick. And it's cool that they show it as well again from this sort of back angle before they cut to a proper shot of Goku. And oh my gosh, ladies and gentlemen, this part is so sick. This kick flip. Oh man, when I saw this for the first time and especially the landing, holy cow, dude, it looks so cool. This is so well executed. And not just that, I feel like Goku's movement is perfectly flowy. His hair the ribbons and the tatters on his clothes all flowing in tandem the flip the motion lines the sort of recoil of him landing on the ground in that final moment right when he has his one foot on the ground before teleporting this whole sequence right here is so nicely executed and i've seen so many lesser essays try and do something that's kind of a similar move to this and basically just have it be one png move to another png to another one right but this animation nails it this is the way that you do a scene where the character isn't super close up to the camera right this is how you animate this type of thing absolutely fantastic work here so of course after having goku land on the ground we have him teleport behind frieza nothing personnel kid <laughs> and of course the backhand and then to the elbow this is kind of weird i will say because, of course, you have Goku looking down at Frieza from the back here, right? And this is sort of supposed to be like, oh, Frieza notices with that little thing. And it looks like Goku's going to hit him from behind with the way that the perspective is, right? But then when it shifts forward, Frieza's now looking at Goku. I think, again, that is more so a problem with the sprites whereas they don't have an animation for frieza turning around and going like what you know and then seeing goku about to elbow him in the cranium so i'm gonna give that one to the sprite um but this animation still looks very nice a lot of quick cuts here which is interesting um but we have the elbow to the face which looks really nice a cut to this shot which i know a lot of people have talked about this one this is a pretty cool looking shot these nice motion lines as well this is just to sort of emphasize that goku is obviously still in movement um as this whole thing is going down the kick up which is interesting that they sort of kick the sprite off the screen here um i can't really recall another animation where they do that that seems pretty unique to me very nice as well that with the way that this looks, they actually have Goku's foot properly pressed on the ground, right? Because the way that this would be um, in actual practice, if you were hitting this pose, which of course would be very hard to do, especially not in motion, your foot of course would be bent like that with your heel up in the air, right? And they'd be the front part of your foot sort of pressed against the ground. Very nice attention to detail there for sure. So we have the kick up, right, with a little bit of movement from Goku, and then the punch forward. I will say, even though there isn't a lot of, like, impact or recoil on this whole section here, I feel like what this section really reminds me of is like a classic anime beatdown, where it's a bunch of different cuts of the enemy um, getting hit by different attacks from the hero, right? That's kind of what this section makes me feel like that they were going for here, right? We had the kick, right? We had the punch forward, and obviously we had the kick previous before the big zoom in of Goku's shot. This is also a super cool shot of perspective here, right? Where Goku gives the beatdown on Frieza in midair. Of course, having the sprite fly into the air, you have a little teleport section of Goku right here. And then, of course, a cut to this perspective. Again, a very unique perspective for this animation. I really, really like the way that they took this here. This asset as well looks super high quality too. And we 
have Goku sort of pan past the screen with his knee here, right? Where it's almost like you feel like you're going to get elbowed. POV, you're about to get smacked by a Super Saiyan, right? With how the perspective looks on this shot. And then, of course, you have the quick cut to it nailing Frieza in the face, which looks great. I know it's a little bit hard to see, but Goku's expression here is also fantastic. You have his hair even moving in this little section here, as well as the tassels and the rips on his clothes. I feel like a lot of the time... Tokon animations before the sort of modern era, quote unquote, um, wouldn't have like the pants and the tatters ripper, a uh, ripple like this, excuse me, but they do that here, which is really, really cool to see. Of course, we have Frieza fall into the lava volcano here. First of all, I have to say <laughs> that shot literally looks like Kazuya throwing, <laughs> kicking his father into the lava, but I love the lava effects here. I think they nail it with the sort of light that is protruding off the lava. I almost would have liked if the entire lava river here or the crack in the ground, like the crater had this light all over it. Maybe they do that just because they're trying to focus you in on the section where the enemy is falling in. Um, but I would have liked to see that all over because I feel like it makes more sense for the light to be reflecting off the whole thing and not just the middle of it, right? But anyway, we have the sprite fall in again. The way that they have the little bits of the lava move really makes this feel like it's magma, right? And as the enemy hits the ground, you have these little lightning effects pop up. And man, this looks so good, right? The little splash up and then, of course, the explosion there at the end. I think they absolutely nailed how lava looked in the Namek Saga. Like, I saw this for the first time and I was very, very impressed with how this explosion effect looked. Let's take a look at this in the full time speed real, real quick. This part looks so nice, especially like that, right? I wish it was longer and I wish it didn't fade out so that we could see a little bit more of that. Um, but yeah, super great job on that section. So now, of course, we move on to the 18 key. Before anything, I am so happy that they included this pose because obviously this is a pretty iconic Namek Goku pose. So I'm glad that they included it. Obviously, this is also his SSR art as well, but I'm glad that they represented it in the actual animation, right? So it is pretty cool that you can actually see Goku squatting up into this actual position as the animation begins here. The only unfortunate thing about this is because of the way that it fades in, right? Obviously, you don't really get to see it in all of its full glory as long as you could, but that's, of course, just because the animation is starting up. That's the only unfortunate thing about Dokkan animations fading in, right? Is the fact that a lot of the time that will end up happening where you'll be cut off of a little bit of the animation. So we have Goku sitting here getting ready to give the beatdown on Frieza. Very, very nice key effects here, by the way. Um, I really, really like the way that the aura looks surrounded by Goku, um, or surrounded by Goku, surrounding Goku, rather, I guess I should say. Um, it looks nice. Again, too, the backgrounds look fantastic. It is kind of interesting to me that with this part, right, it is the green skies of Namek. And for the 12 key, it is the, like, sort of darkened red skies after the planet is about to explode. Interesting that they chose to do it that way, because I feel like it's a little bit less consistent. But maybe what their thought process was on this was if you're getting the 18 key, then the additional would follow. That's obviously a 12 key. And then it would kind of make sense chronologically. I don't know if they thought that if they thought, excuse me, that far ahead. But if they did, that is very good pre-planning on their part. Okay, so we of course have Goku readied up uh, until he bursts forward onto the screen. Right, you literally get one frame of him in full view like this. Right before going forward. This shot of Goku looks fantastic. Again, it would look a little bit better if the video was a small bit higher quality for sure. Um, but absolutely fantastic the hair looks good here they do a great job of having the key really emphasize that it's moving like crazy around goku as well they do a great job of emphasize him moving quickly forward right with this whole thing i've talked about this with a couple of essays a lot of animations will have a front facing shot of a character flying forward towards the camera some of them look better than others, but one thing that a lot of the best ones do is where they have the character pulse like this to sort of represent them moving fast. And it actually looks like sort of a 3D object, right? Even though that's of course just the PNGs moving to sort of give you that optical illusion, right? 
they do a good job of representing that here for sure. Um, they also have the minimal movement on the pants again and on the obi belt tassels, which is nice. Now, you do get a very sharp transition into this pose for Goku right here. This is a very quick one, right? There is basically no in-between, no cuts, no flashes on this. Um, I'm curious to see, how does this look in the full-time speed, actually? Let me see. Because I've actually not... Have I noticed it before? Oh, okay. So, I guess it's just because you don't really notice it because it transitions into this nice wraparound shot again. Funny enough, this looks almost the same. <laughs> the giant fist there. This looks almost the same as the shot that we were talking about before. It takes the same perspective and the same camera angle, but this is definitely a little bit of a different asset from before. Um, very interesting that they take that sort of same angle. I guess it makes sense in the context of the attack, but still very interesting, right? So we have Goku transition into the punch here, and this is actually a really cool way to do this with the giant fist on screen. So of course, they have Goku's face focused, but then, right, they cut to just the fist on screen, which of course, out of context, this looks kind of funny. And ironically enough, this asset is super high quality. However, what this of course kind of tricks your brain into thinking is that you're moving past Goku's face right, as he's getting ready for the punch, you're moving past it, you're going right against his fist, and then you're moving past his fist, past his arms, biceps, shoulder, and into seeing the impact against Frieza with a very nice spurt of key there as well. So that is a super cool way to do perspective, and I believe there is a specific animation technique. Again, I'm not a, you know, normal anime animation expert, right, but... Um, I believe that is a specific animation technique where they do that to sort of give you that tricked perspective, right? By making you look at certain parts of the um, scene that normally would seem kind of weird out of context, right? Like literally with just the fist on the screen. This animation feels a lot more like they're going for a very anime-esque adaptation of this super right where i feel like a lot of the other super attacks of lesser units look more like oh this is a super attack from a mobile game right and they're not really trying to take into account these more i don't know if you would call them advanced animation techniques again not an expert so don't quote me on that but these things that i see more commonly in anime in cartoons right to give these big scenes a lot more oomph i feel like i see a lot more in these heavy hitting essays and these essays that are a lot better than ones of lesser quality so of course we have the impact here this is interesting um that they kind of zoom in on the fist here right of course when it makes impact it's zoomed in with the key exploding out but you have the it almost kind of reminds me of like uh the, you know, those clips on YouTube you see of, like, Bollywood movies with the crazy editing with, like, the... Right? When something, like, super basic happens. That's kind of what this reminds me of. But obviously, in practice, it looks very good for this animation, for sure. We then have a cut to Goku grabbing Frieza here. Now, this is a little bit unfortunate because, again, you know what I'm going to say already. This is sort of a testament to how stinky the sprites are. Obviously, the perspective is a little bit weird here, and of course, the size comparison between these two is way off, right? Goku is a lot bigger than Frieza here, and the tail should be a lot bigger than that. One interesting thing to note here, though, is that his arms are absolutely humongous. My man rocking those tree trunk arms. My gosh. Very fitting, though, of course, for Super Saiyan. So, of course, we have him begin to grab those, and then it cut into him spinning Frieza around, which this shot is very, very nice. This is definitely one of my favorites from the 18 key, for sure, um, where Goku spins the enemy around. The only thing that kind of stinks about this animation in terms of the context of Dokkan Battle, because it really does look so good, is that this animation does look very weird with certain sprites, depending on the size of the character, the size of the sprite, right? The sort of build of the character, right? This animation can look a little bit weird because of course they do a decent job of using the sprites to their advantage here, right? Obviously giving you the sprite where the character would get smacked against the screen and get a KO, right? That's what they use for the close-up shot of Goku, you know, whipping them around. And of course, excuse me, some of the farther assets for the enemy being spun in the circle. That's definitely a very nice use of the resources that you have, right? But for enemies like Hyrudagon, this would probably look really weird. And for enemies like Chaozu, this would also probably look really weird because they're so tiny. 
So that is the only thing that's a little bit of a shame about this animation. But again, that's not really any fault of the animation itself. That is, of course, more so the structure of how Dokkan Metal works as a game, right? So, of course, we transition into this shot of Goku holding Frieza from the side. And we have a very nice emphasis on the final throw here, right? Where he powers up to Super Saiyan. This is a super cool way to do it. Because not only is this a transition that makes sense, right? Just zooming in right away. But I feel like it really emphasizes the toss and how far and fast Goku is actually tossing the enemy here with a nice zoom into his face as well. And, of course, the power-up is really cool here as well. I was about to say cool. <laughs> Uh, by the way, Gohan Beast looking hair here. Goku, what are you doing, my guy? <laughs> yeah, so Goku throws the enemy into the sky. You see the sprite fly up into the green Namekian sky. And, oh, this part is so clean, bro. So, of course, we have the um, hands come together here. A nice back shot of Goku before he is about to launch the Kamehameha. Again, very nice minimal movement throughout the entire animation. You have the rocks floating there as well, which makes sense, because obviously a lot of the time in Dragon Ball, when characters are powering up the rocks, kind of just float around them. This shot of Goku is so mint, bro. Oh my gosh. This literally, like if you screenshotted this and looked at this from a little bit farther away, right? Because here you can kind of see a little bit of the graininess on the edges. Again, that's just sort of Dokkan Metal doing its thing, and I guess the 480p video. But this literally looks like a screenshot right out of the anime. This looks so good, dude. It looks so nice. So, of course, we finally have Goku get into position here. First of all, oh, man, the lighting effects are so nice on this. Obviously, as the Kamehameha begins to power up, we have the area around Goku darken. And you can actually see it begin to form in his hands as the darkness begins to take hold. Right? You can see the little bit of the energy form in his hands. And this is so, so, so much better than a lot of other Dokkan essays when they do the Kamehameha. A lot of essays that I've seen, even in recent time, right, with a lot of the recent Dokkan fests that we've gotten, just have the generic ball.png, right? Where it's literally just a blue ball that sort of increases in their hand. But this looks like the animation, and this looks like if key was lifelike, quote unquote, I know that's a little bit weird to say, but if the key was realistic in the way that it formed in the character's hands, right? This is how it would look. And Dokkan Battle absolutely nails that, right? So we have a quick cut to a transition of Goku getting ready to fire. A zoom in to his face here, right? With obviously the beam behind him. And again, with the way that this Kamehameha looks, it's a lot nicer looking than the usual sort of like PNG where it's a white circle and then they have like a dark outline around it and then maybe a little bit of like, you know, a border around that, right? This looks like a ball of energy and with the light sort of reflecting off and dissipating off of the ball, right? They nail it for this for sure. We have a really cool shot here of it zooming in on Goku burying his face in his arms before of course we get the uh the iconic Dokkan Metal face of course the uh Go Bros right have this and Vegito also have this face too it's kind of funny that you know you see this so commonly in essays but I guess it's just because they're all characters that look the same and are Goku or Goku related but we have a very nice shot where you are sort of inside the Kamehameha. I love the blue effects on this. I love the lighting. I love that the white as well is sort of in the middle and it gets more blue as it goes out, which makes sense because, of course, the center of a Kamehameha is white. This very nice shot here, we have it flying away from Goku here. A very cool um, shape as well on the Kamehameha. I think they did a great job of that as well. It's really cool, too, that the ground is also, you know, has this sort of full color you can kind of see the different colors on the ground still but they're obviously covered with a tint of blue they nailed the coloring for sure so of course we have the transition into the card art here now interestingly enough i know some people may know this little factoid but um on global the card art for the tur i don't remember if they changed it because i think it was technically a bug where like the asset of the effects were layered above the card art but at one point if it's not still there um goku is actually fully blue on uh, the, the tur card art itself um and he wasn't colored in the normal color like he is in here which to be honest if they would have kept that and especially for 
the animation section of this. I almost would have loved that even more because obviously that would sort of emphasize you being inside the Kamehameha even when they're showing the card art, which is obviously something that they don't usually do. The only way that they incorporate the card art really into the super attack is if it like matches the pose that the character just took in the actual animation, right? It's cool when they do that, but that certainly would have been nice to have this card be full blue um, in the like little essay showing of it here. Okay, so moving past this now, we of course have a very nice back shot of Goku here flying this up to the sky. By the way, the clouds here, oh my gosh, the clouds look so perfect, dude. Like it literally looks like an oil painting or something like that. Looks very, very nice if I do say so myself. This shot, of course, super iconic. Looks great. Very, very stylized to the Namek Saga. Again, all the minimal movement is at play here. And a very interesting movement. I wanted to note this too. At the end with the Kamehameha here, they sort of have it like come up and then the outline glows brighter and then it sort of expands to cover the screen, which is interesting instead of just having it like move all the way up. They sort of have it grow to take over the camera. I think that's a really interesting perspective for them to take. You also have what I assume is supposed to be kind of like the character getting enveloped by the key here, right? With these white lines. Um, you have this little spark of yellow here to transition into the beam flying off of the planet here. Of course, flying away into space. And the Kamehameha looks very, very nice here. A very cool perspective as well. Um, and, oh, you know what I, you know I love when they do stuff like this. I really wish they would have followed through with it all the way. But, you have it come off the planet and then the camera sort of follows it and it goes into it sideways, right? Whereas now you can sort of see the side of the Kamehameha energy as it sort of fades out from the shot. It would have been really cool if they would have followed through all the way. And as this sort of shot forward, right, you then would have been able to see the back, I guess you would say, of the ball at the front of the Kamehameha, right? Because it sort of feels like they're about to do that, but they only show you the side and cut it short there, unfortunately. Regardless, though, fantastic looking animation. Um, and, oh, we're moving on to the Bakayoro! Oh, I'm so excited about this part. So this is actually a part where I am excited that they did not kind of do you dirty on the fade in because as you can see right when they fade into black they don't have goku move basically until the last little bit of the fade which is nice because you can get this full animation in nice color now obviously some of these transition frames look a little bit wonky but of course you know that's because the animation is moving and again i would much rather them do that than having the animation or the assets rather just fade into each other Again, this is another animation technique, I believe. Somebody mentioned it in one of the comments on my videos. I'm so sorry, I don't remember what it is. I think it might be smearing or animation smearing. Something along those lines. It's a little bit different than that, because that is a lot more extreme in most cases, where you'll have the character's face super extended with a lot of crazy lines to sort of emphasize the movement. But I think this is something kind of along those lines, I guess you would say. Again, I'm not an animation expert. I apologize, I don't know my terminology. Um, you know, to the highest degree. I just analyzed Dokkan essays for fun. But, as you can see here, right, of course, we have a nice shot of Goku standing up and getting into position. It's over! <laughs> Love this shot of Goku here. We have a quick cut. I will say, this was one thing that I always kind of didn't like about this animation. I love both of these shots a lot, but I really would have loved if they would have had some rotoscoping at play here, and they would have had the camera sort of twist around to then look at this angle of Goku. I think that would have made this animation even more high tier for me, um, and definitely would have made it excel to a whole nother level. The cut is fine, right? And both of these shots look good on their own, but I really wish there would have been a perspective of the camera turning around Goku to see this section here, right? This is another case, by the way, of these modern animations actually trying to match the lip flaps, or at least having the character open and close their mouth a lot more than just having them literally open their mouth and have it be open, right? Also, ironically enough, I know this is sort of a little bit different from what I was just talking about, but they do a great job of kind of the opposite, where instead of moving the camera, Goku obviously turns around, and the animation actually looks like he's turning around, right? It looks very, very nice. We have the enemy sprite come into frame here. I really like this animation, don't get me wrong, but this was always something that made me go like, oh, hello, <laughs> because the sprite is so much of the focus for the first section of this, right? You have Goku squat down and power up, 
and fly away, which does look very nice. And you will get to see in a moment here um, the sprite a little bit more emphasized as well. But yeah, this shot of Goku flying away looks literally perfect. Like... There is not a single thing that I think I can complain about here. Goku's squat down looks fantastic. Coloring on this dude? Oh my gosh. This literally looks like they cut this right out of the anime. Because this is perfect coloring for when he's in the Super Saiyan aura. Looks so good. We obviously have him fly away into the distance. And they cut to him with his aura flying up into the sky. Now... This is the section that I was talking about. You have the sprite on the ground getting mad, getting angry, right? Which unfortunately is a section where you have to look at this ugly thing on your screen, right? And then of course we have them fly forward. I have to give credit where credit is due. The lava in the background does look absolutely fantastic. I think they nailed that aspect of it. But you do have to stare at that stinky sprite as they're of course giving chase to Goku um, to get their revenge as it were. Now, of course, we have this section. The key looks fantastic as we're coming up on Goku here. We have a very nice zoom in to Goku and a very clean turnaround. As well, you have a little animation of the, huh? You know, like the realization sort of spark that they do sometimes in anime, right? A very cool way that they do this too, because they actually hold it here for just a moment, right? Of Goku looking back at the enemy um you know to then realize what's going on before having him turn in a pretty 3d like fashion again for the most part i think that this looks really really good um in the turn there are a couple of parts that look a little bit janky let's take it with the frame by frame right they do a lot of good rotoscoping in this section as well but there are some parts where you can see, right, like this looks really nice with the transition. It does look a little bit funny with some of the colors changing and obviously Goku's like body almost looking slimmer. But again, that's just the perspective, right? The turn looks pretty good. And then, of course, Goku's facial expression changing. That also really impressed me um, the first time because I feel like they've been doing a lot better on having facial expressions be a lot more animated with animations in recent times. So I think they nailed that for sure. Also cool, by the way, that they sort of sit on this shot for a moment, by the way, right? Like the sudden realization, his expression changing, both of those things are good points to sit on before having Goku fully turn around. Now, you can see here there is a slight animation fade, which is a little bit of a shame to see because this entire animation has not had a single moment of that. We have gone through this entire thing frame by frame, so we would know, right? It does happen again in a moment here, whereas Goku is turning, right? You can see that they have, this part's maybe just more like a flash. This is kind of weird. Maybe it's supposed to be like the key sort of coming over him. Um, maybe that was what my eyes were tricked by. Maybe it's just that one. No, 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 I knew I saw it. There we go. So there is a little bit of a fade from one asset to another here, which is interesting because are they doing this for the mouth? Because obviously it goes from the open mouth to the closed mouth. But no, because in between these frames, you can see that is a little bit of his teeth are exposed, which are in neither of these particular frames, right? That are the ones before and after the fade. So it is a little bit of a shame to see that they included that. You really can't tell that it's in there. So this one is a lot better of a use of it for sure, especially with how quick the turn goes in execution. It's definitely not as much of a offender where you can see it blatant, blatantly, excuse me, I was going to say blatant as day. That doesn't make any sense. Blatantly, right? Like clear as day in other animations. But it is still a little bit of a shame to see that they didn't just continue turning him like they were doing the entire animation. I don't know. Very strange why they decided to make that choice. Nonetheless, though, the turn does look pretty good. Um, and of course, we have this very nice zoom in to Goku's face here um, where he opens his mouth. And of course, the back shot before the very iconic Bakayo. And this shot looks so nice. The key around Goku. Oh my gosh, dude. Dude, they nailed this so well. Oh my gosh. So obviously when Goku whips his arm back, right, you can see all the lava in the background and the way that they have this transition, and this of course is akin to the anime, the lava, you know, explodes in front of Goku, which is such a nice touch because obviously in, you know, this is more so akin to the anime, but they definitely could have just had him fire the beam, but no, they have the lava explode in front of him. And then of course, moving his hand forward, which this shot, by the way, looks super Namek-esque in terms of the coloring. This is a very 
hard cut, I will say, right here, but you really don't notice it because not only are you distracted by the text, but obviously everything else that's going on on screen. You, of course, have the very cool impact frames where Goku is shooting the blast forward and, of course, makes contact with the lava. And, oh my gosh, this shot is so mint. It is so nice, dude. Literally, the lava effects, the key blast itself, Goku, all of this is perfection. I don't think they could have nailed this particular section here any better. <laughs> it's so good. It, it's literally perfect. This, of course, is a little bit lackluster as a follow-up, I will say, because this section looks really cool, but this part sort of implies that you're in the middle of the key blast, which I think is a little bit weird, or maybe it's just the enemy getting hit from the knockback of, like, the energy? I don't know. It's just a bit strange because you have these really nice shots where, like, you're enveloped in the Kamehameha like we just saw in the 18 key, but then you just have this, like, orange circle right where the enemy flies forward and then gets knocked back maybe it's supposed to be one of those like anime-esque like you know those in-between shots or not in-between shots but like in combat when they have like the crazy kooky backgrounds with all the animation lines maybe that's what it's supposed to be referencing um but it is a little bit weird that they don't just have him enveloped in yellow because funny enough they do at the end right his sprite ends up getting um you know a lot more yellow tinted right but this shot at the end of that is really, really nice. We're obviously have the blast fly forward and, of course, envelop Frieza in the key here, which looks absolutely fantastic. You have the enemy sprite get fully enveloped here, and wow, this looks so good. Having the enemy sort of disappear into the blast, almost the Thanos snap effect, right, where they actually get enveloped in here. What this has to be, which is really interesting to think about, right? Because they can't make the sprite disappear like this in the way that the game works. What's really interesting about this is that what this must be is these individual assets of the key flying forward have to have some pieces cut out of them so that they can sort of make the um, enemy sprite look cut up like this and look like it's disappearing into the animation. I'd be curious to see this on other sprites too. I wonder how that would look because I don't know how big the holes are, right? Like, did they allocate for bigger or smaller sprites? But regardless, it looks absolutely fantastic here for sure. You, of course, have it make impact with the ground, which this explosion effect is so quick, but definitely worthy of note. The quick flash of light, and then, of course, the plume that comes after it. Oh, man. So good. You have Goku also hovering there in the air, of course. And finally, the shots that is surely the most iconic, the KO screen with Goku looking down at the enemy. The hair here really reminds me a lot of like live 2D animations. That was kind of the way that I thought about it the first time I saw this animation, right? They look like those modern gacha games that use that live 2D software to sort of make images look like they're animated. That's really what it felt like here for me. His hair is very, very curled, I will say here too. I don't remember if in this specific scene, it's this like uh, wavy or curled up because I felt like it was a lot more bigger, more solid, like almost mountain-like chunks. Um, but it does look very curved. Maybe it is so messy because, I mean, he's been on a dying planet for the past, like, you know, however long. You know, five Frieza minutes, of course. But it looks really good. Um, I will say, I know some people have said in the past that his face does feel a tiny bit off. I can kind of agree. I don't think it's anything that would make me go like, ew, gross, you know, or think this animation is any worse for it. Um, it's a good expression for sure. I definitely think there is something that is maybe a little bit strange, but of course, Dokkan does try and keep to the main source material as much as possible. So of course, you know, that's why it looks like that. But that is Namek Goku's animations, ladies and gentlemen. Wow, this was a beefy boy. Of course, we had so many animations to take a look at with this one. Um, even this just being a double super attack active skill unit, um, of course, with how high quality these animations are, they take a lot of time, especially going through it frame by frame, getting all of the little details. And that's the thing, right? Sometimes with some of these animations, to make these videos a little bit more, you know, consumable, I try and just talk about it in a general sense and not always go frame by frame. 
But in animations like this, where almost every little detail matters and contributes to how nice these animations look, it's almost impossible not to take a look at all of these small little details and really appreciate how good these look, how much effort the designers, artists, animators put into all of this kind of thing, and of course, at the end of the day, make a fantastic looking animation that will easily stand the test of time for years to come. I absolutely love this guy's set of animations. I'm going to be very interested and curious to see how the Cooler Movie Goku animations pass this guy up. If they can pass this guy up in quality, which I definitely think that they can, right? Even though these animations do look fantastic, there are certain little things that you can catch and I'm sure that definitely look like that they are a year old. And that does not mean that they look bad by any means, but with the recent quality of some of the modern Dokkan animations, of course, you know, they even surpass these, which is crazy to think because these look so good, right? And... I think that this guy will last for a very, very long time. I think people will look back at these in a couple of years and still think that they look just as fantastic as they do now. I cannot wait to see the new unit, and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, let me know what you think of this guy's animations in the comments section below. And, of course, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. We, of course, hit the 1K mark and recently got the option to apply for monetization. So that is huge. Thank you guys so much for all of your support. I would really love to be able to do this full time if I could, honestly. Um, that's sort of a dream of mine. So if that could become a reality, that would be fantastic. But until then, thank you guys so much for watching. I will catch you in the next one. Don't cut assets out. Peace.